Good morning, America. Good morning, world. This is your 6 a.m. Bible study with Champ Vinci and I Am Dex Speaks. And we come to you amidst this coronavirus, and it's not just a scare, it's a pandemic. So in other words, we're all on lockdown, or we're about to be on lockdown. And so there are things that during times of crisis that, that we, they, they send us into fear and doubt and shame and you know all sorts of questioning type things. But I want to share something with you from, from Pastor Jensen Franklin's book, Acre of Diamonds, that, that I find uh, to be really perfect for this time. He's talking about it's in the uh, chapter of the stay here command. Um, there are times when God says to stay. And in this uh, stay here command, and I don't think we have much of a choice since we're all going on lockdown. Um, so we are in quite of a stay here command. And so one of the examples he uses is it, this This little section is called This is the Place. And he's talking about Isaac. And... Um, They, they were going through tough times and all the resources had dried up. So much like right now, resources are about to dry up. People can't go to work. We can't ship goods. Uh, food's going to come to a stop at some point. Everything, I mean, that's it is what it is except the reality. But what are we as faith believers supposed to do? Well, Isaac, unlike most of the people out there, began digging wells. We believe that these Bible studies and videos are our way of digging wells right now to help good things come out of. So while everyone else sat around and worried and was like, what are you know, what is going on? Why is Isaac doing this? He dug three wells. It says in here that the first one he called the well of contention. The well of contention. The second well he called the well of hatred. So we have the people that are content with the situation, right? And then we have the people who have hatred in the situation. And they kept, the Philistines were kind of like trying to push him out, calling him crazy, doing this, trying to get him no. Every time he would pop up and be like, we got to do something. They'd be like, no, no, no. And they, they were very idle. Um, so they were the contention well. And then the people who were angry at the people that were just sitting in contention, not doing much. Probably the people with the money. The other people dying were in hatred. But then he makes one more. So the ones and the twos become the threes. And on the threes, listen to what he named this well, the third well. He named it Roomy Space. Roomy Space. So with a God that provides everything, with a savior that came and saves us with an instruction of love your brother, use your resources, plant talents into talented people, move resources, move resources, make plays. When that happens, it creates three, which is through Isaac's story, means there's roomy space. I believe there's roomy space out there, but we're not moving the resources fast enough. So... That's, that's where God has my spirit today. I'm going to turn it over to Dexter. He's going to come from the Bible. We'll see what his spirit has. All right, I'm going to read today from Ephesians chapter 2. And the title of this is um, By Grace Through Faith. And you, you he made alive, who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy, because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ by grace you have been saved and raised us up together or made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. 
Therefore remember that you, once Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hands, that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who he um, has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the um, enmity that is the law of commandments con um, contained in ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from the two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, thereby putting the death, um, to death the um, enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were afar off and to those who were near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom the whole building, being fitted together, grows into a holy temple unto the Lord, in whom you also are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And that's just a um, such a powerful message right there about having um, that relationship and having your life turned. And, and even in this um, passage, as Paul is um, writing and, and he's saying to the people, like, look, you, it, it, you have to... Um, turn there, there's grace for your situation and at the same time he's being an example and he's saying look I know how it looks you're looking at me I was in the same I was sitting in your seat two weeks ago six weeks ago three years ago I was in those same places I was um, um, moved off of my fleshly desires I was making decisions um, frantic fear-based decisions based on life just like all of you so I'm not coming in here with judgment but I'm coming in here telling you that there's a savior that will change this whole thing and bring life to your situation um, in, in this first um, it says in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air so the first thing that I saw when I read that right there the prince of power of the air the enemy, mm. the Satan, is in the air. Mm, coronavirus. coronavirus. It's in the air. It's in the mm. air. It's the enemy. Mm -hmm. It's an attack. And so he's saying right there, you know what I'm saying? That that in that right there, that that there it is. <laughs> and so, but here's what I heard, which this is why it's so cool to be able to work with you, is I heard a blueprint for what we're supposed to do. Okay. And I didn't even hear the enemy part. I heard the blueprint after that. So. This is why it's important to have a brotherhood. It's not to point out each other's flaws. That's stupid. Jesus died for those. What we are to do is exhort one another like I just did. I just bragged on him. And I bragged on us. And, and did that under the name of God while we're doing these kind of things. So right in here, what I heard was a blueprint. And, and kind of eyed this while I kind of walked through this, if you don't mind. So it says there was different steps in almost every paragraph. And I want the leaders out here and then the, also the future leaders or people the household leaders, community leaders, all this. There is a process that it says that when the enemy comes through the air, which we're in, and right in this verse, I have no idea what he was about to read. No clue. We, we, we didn't even talk about what he's choosing, what I'm choosing. So God just gave us a blueprint. Now, you have to have the capability to either sit back, listen, go ahead and grab a pen, pull out your phone, or pull, you know, whatever you got to do, rewind this if you have to, but get ready because this is the way it's supposed to work. We are saved by grace is what it was talking about. Saved, righteous, clean. So don't judge people, especially in these times. The next thing after that, it talks about here comes the riches. Okay. So we are in a world that, that sits and idolizes Jesus on a cross. Oh, pray for Jesus. Wait for this magical thing. And on the inside, 
he's right. That is the relationship you need to wait and dream and these kind of things. And that's what's out there. But there also is a process of doing these things. So the next section, after it talks about the riches, okay, uh, I, I may miss a thing or two right here, but it, it then begins to talk about that, that hey, all right, so let, let's talk about the riches part. In today's time, and especially in America, there is the majority of the money is wrapped up in a small amount of people. So in order for people to survive, it means that people with the riches need to supply. And what makes it okay to supply? Well, grace is what the Bible says. And that when you hear people walking and talking for the Lord, your job isn't to judge them. Your job is to give people in grace. For by what, grace you have been saved through yeah, faith. For by grace you have been saved through faith. A couple lines on down, it talks about riches, right? Yeah, we're well, right above that. Then it says, and, and that... Um, and that, that right there is not of ourselves. And so it has nothing to do with that. That's his grace. That's his, right. you know, in the process. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. We are his works. workmanship. So in other words, it's not to wait on him. We are his workmanship. Like a ship. Like we are to work and move through these times like a ship in the sea. Workmanship. Work. Man. Ship. Assets, work, man, ship people to where they need to be. Work, man, ship things here. So it may be a dream and the, the process is waiting on God to come over this time. But there it says right here, grace, riches, work, man, ship. Okay, what's next? Created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. He prepared these and those riches for workmanship that he put people like us in place ahead of time that we would have the need so that you could come together. And in a few more lines or something through there, it talks about two people to make something else. Well, it says, um, therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh who are called uncircumcision. Yep. He wants to remind you that you too work. That, that you too were uncircumcised. You too were sinful. You too were broken. You know, Jensen shares a lot of personal things in his book and some really, you know, some difficult things that God put on him at one time. You have to read it to get it, but, but you too were there. So don't forget that while you sit there in judgment. So you like how God tells you, hey, they're saved. We need riches. Work, man. Ship. You too were where they were. Okay. But now in Christ Jesus... You who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. Y'all were brought near by the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace. He's our peace. Who has made both one. Not your judgment. Sorry. Who has made both one and has broken down the middle wall of separation. <laughs> having abolished in his flesh the enmity, that is, the law of commandments contained in ordinances. Whoa, whoa, right there. So read that since he who has it says broken uh, down. Yeah, it says having abolished in his flesh the enmity. Okay, so there's a wall that it just talked about right before that, and this says in those who have broken down the middle wall, of the middle wall, which is also right here through separation, because one side's going to be Pharaoh, one side over here is going to be um, of abuse or slavery, and then there's a wall split right down the middle of your head with a cross right here. And he, Jesus broke down this wall to split it to keep people from being either just a slave or a victim. All right? And broke down the in, uh, I have trouble, in, enmity or the internal uh, judgmental spin that we go through. He broke that down in what was it? Having a boss in his flesh, the enemy that is the law of commandments contained in the ordinances. Right. He brought, broke down the law of commandments, which is held within ordinances. So what this is saying in reality is that the wall that Jesus wants broken down so that the workman ship for the people who are saved by grace with the riches that is out there. Hold on, I lost my thought real quick. Uh, what was that last part of that last sentence? Uh, um, the law of commandments. Oh, yeah, the law of the ordinances. So you're thinking, well, we, the knights of the Christian 
ordinances say that these people must go this amount of time to be able to be blessed by the riches of those are the laws of the ordinances and you know what satan runs us here on earth so if you want to keep following all these laws when the bible says that there is no law when we walk walk in in the faith of of jesus christ and he keeps talking about breaking down these ordinances that you you know who you are out there but you might be people in your regular household that has all these ordinances well your ordinances may be may be giving your kids ptsd your ordinances may be keeping may have led to your ordinances of in the past, especially while I've been coming to a lot of you out there and saying we must move now and y'all didn't move and now we're here and people are dying, you used ordinances then which leads us unprepared now. So whether it be from a religious standpoint, the religious leadership out here in America, it's an idol, I-D-L-E, an I-D-O-L. Oh, the Jesus on the tree will help us. That's not how it works, and this says right here. So you must break down those laws of ordinances and empower people saved by grace that in this time... So go ahead to that next little part. So as to create in himself one new man from two, thus making peace, and that he might reconcile them both to God in one body through the, Christ, I mean, through the cross, thereby putting to death the enmity. Exactly. So in order for... For the enmity, the, the chaos in the world that we live in, due to the the air that, that the devil ha, is controlling, and not just that air, but the airwaves in your own brain, the airwaves in what you're tweeting, what you're reading, all these other things. So, in order for that to be broken down, read that last part of that sentence one more time. That he might reconcile them both yep. to God in one body through the cross. So, what is split, what is split, whether it be income levels, whether it be uh, Democrats and Republicans, right now the whole world split up into countries being sectioned off, that in order for us to achieve what it is that God, who you religious people would have to agree, he's angry. He's angry. Look how angry he is. And for non-religious people, we've missed a few things systematically. We're not ready. It's okay. I'm not going to go down these fear paths. But what the Bible for the religious people or what just makes sense from a national level is what it says to do is it must take not that guy over there has to do this or that guy over there has to do this. No, it takes two boink, to become one because what God sees down here is he sees a bunch of spread out individuals that claim to know the Jesus, but they're talking about the Jesus on the cross. That's not what Jesus came for. He came for us to cross through difficult times together. Yes, we may be out into a storm, and our storm's out. When we walk out by themselves, here's a different perspective of the Bible. When people go out walking by themselves and thinking on, oh, I'm just out here on my own, right? <laughs> you end up in a desert. You end up in a desert, right? But if you just stay around the same group you're in all the time, then you end up in idolization. So there must be crossings, there must be development, there must be ways to bridge this neurologically. Pharaoh's on the left, the slaves are on the right. Jesus split the wall down the middle to where the iniquities, this is that bipolar feel. The, it, 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 those left side would be like, those sinners, right side would be like, they're either gonna be like, we're sinners, or they're gonna be like, those meanies. Well, Jesus, those are iniquities. All right? Those are the chaos that's going on, and we're all in the front going, which way do we go? Can we find some toilet paper? Can we do this? Pow! Put a cross in it. And what do you got to do? That cross that goes this way, there's a line that goes this way, and it's ready, set, and go. And what that is is from old to new. And what that is is also the outstretching hands that say, hey, those that are saved by grace that are called to this time. And then the people with the riches, they go like this, and we grab hands, and we come together and unite. There's no greater time to empower saints than now. Let's say things get dramatically worse. <laughs> you going to take your money to the grave? Or do y'all think we should put some of it in play? When people are down, Jesus rises up. So he came and preached peace to you who are far off and to those who are near. For through him we both have access by one spirit to the Father. 
Now therefore you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom building being fitted together grows into the holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. And this is um something that me personally, I'm, I'm currently dealing with right now because um, I, I've had that transformation of spirit and having to walk out in the world um, with a new heart and a new spirit but have the same body and the same look and the things that um, were judgments um, or other judgments, um, racial insensitivities, um, all of the things that were things that I dealt with even before the complete transformation of my life is now um, feeling like a factor. And although I feel that um, all the aspects of um, the change and the, 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 the peace and all that, I'm, I'm still feeling um, there's a part of me that's like, come on, like, why, mm -hmm. like, why me? Like, why'd you, like, why did you pick me? Like, I'm just a black dude, like, with dread, like, trying to do my own thing. Like, this is, like, it looks crazy to me, too. Like, it looks like, come on, I'm, I'm going, but, but these are the people that God is calling to change the world. He, he's he's not he's not looking for the person that is is sitting there like oh I've I've read every every page of of this Bible like he's also not sitting there with all of you with your finger pointing at people going like this he wants you to be like this he knows that we're we're all a broken um, broken generation of fallen people and we have problems and issues and we have um, just everyday concerns that trouble our minds and our families and things that are going on and, and bills and and finances and having enough all, all of those things are just issues that everybody deals with and because of those issues we get distracted from um, the the true essence of life and so when calamity and tragedy comes everybody is just taken off you know balance they don't know how to Think. They don't know how to breathe. They don't know what to do because everything is bad. And this situation is bad because when you start talking about everything being shut down, you're talking about banks, you're talking about schools, um, groceries, restaurants. And so the natural reaction is fear, chaos. What are we going to do? What are we going to eat? Wow. You know. Wow, what a perfect setup for the devil. Because here's how it is. Because as I've been speaking about for months and years, and as the Bible talks about, idleness is awful. And we've been pushing you all to begin to make moves and to do them faster. And what we've been hearing is, wait, wait, wait. Oh, you're in testing. Oh, you're in training. Oh, you're in this. You're in this. So how does the situation get here? We just look at it now. And it's real easy to be like, oh, God, we got to do something now. It is on you that we are in the situation. It is on you, the leaders of this country, the leaders, the leaders of the churches especially, because I have been preaching about the ones and the twos and been speaking about the leadership of how we help one another rather than divide for months and months and months. And you all sit out there like this. Oh, just be careful. Oh, oh, oh just be patient. Oh, just be this. Well, guess what? People are dying all over the place now. Now, you are not the originator of the coronavirus, but what you have not done is set up systems that help brothers and sisters, that have a community feel inside of your homes, that, that don't divide the nation, that bring it together. A bridge to get us there. Read that last part about, I think it gives them their final piece of pie so that... that now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. You hear that? Read that one more time, please. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Yes, yeah, so therefore, some of the money that you're holding back is actually ours. As fellow citizens of the house of God, I had no kind of uh, predestination to come up to say this. 
This right here is saying what you are withholding from us. As a family member of God, inside of this, while we have the opportunity to help people, we need to put it into play. And many of you across the nation and around the world are sitting in similar situations. Sure, I'm pressing this message to, to the elite right now. Sure, I'm pressing it to, uh, to the people who are, who are sitting on the thrones that are going to be blown, that, 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 are, that are melting. Your kingdoms are melting all around you. Do not sit in idleness. I believe in you. You believe in this message. I am so thankful and happy that so many of you are going to be able to put your riches and your kingdoms back into drive. Because Isaac didn't sit around. He dug wells. My question for all of you out there is what will you do today? What will you do in the time of a storm? And if you don't know what to do, we have lots of ways to be able to help you and your family and this community and this world, the nation and the world alone. But we can't do it without the assets, without the doors being open. We are seeking, we are knocking, and we are asking for you to join us, to unite with us. Those of us that are being called out of the darkness to save your kingdoms, to save God's kingdom. When David and Samson show up, are you going to put us in, or are, you, or are you the Philistines? You want to close this with something? Yeah, just um, trying to think, man. Just, just want to just pray. Father God, I just thank you, Lord. In the midst of the fear, God, and the um, panic that is globally trending right now, Father, I just ask, Lord, that for your peace that surpass this all earthly understanding God begin to permeate the spirits of your people father God I thank you that this is the time of revival God God I thank you Lord that Revive. this is the time that hearts will begin to seek you like never before father. wake up God I thank you that it's in these times of um, um, Fear and, and, and tragedies, God, that, Fear not. Uh, that there's going to be a whole nother nation of leaders that um, will New rise, leaders. God, out of the ashes of, of their um, um, lives, God, and will become um, the bright shining lights that will help propel the generation forward, God, even in the midst of all the things that are to come, God. And even as those things begin to come and as um, the world begins to shift and the military comes in, Lord, and the martial law and the people get... Um, we, we begin to um, um, shift their 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 minds, God, and, and the enemy begins to get his soldiers in line to to try to rebel against the system, God. Mm -hmm. We we just um, see all these things clear um, um, as, as they're coming, Father, and so we just ask for wisdom, God, um, even in those situations for the officers, for the military that's going to be um, in these cities, God, for the officials that have to make decisions God for for the families that are um, with, with teenagers and kids that are, are trying to keep their kids contained um, in the midst of a quarantine father Lord we just thank you God that you give us wisdom and insight into the future events God and even in the midst of this is just one um, this is just one thing God there, there, there are so many things that are pressing us right now in this world father and and, and more things to come, God, we're on the the um, iceberg, Lord, of of world global change because of the climate, because of the earthquakes, because of the tornadoes. Wake up, people! That are that are happening, God. These are our days, God. That you're telling us, you're giving us signs, God. There's locusts like never before over in Africa. Wake up, Father. There, there's the, the the signs of the time, God. The war is upon us, God. Rumors of war, and there's there, there's so much going on, Father. Move or you work and for so Satan. We just pray right now and believe God that this is the time God for us to turn our entire lives and our hearts and our minds and our, our eyesight God on you and as we do that God you will open our eyes um, um, with heavenly eyes you will open our ears with heavenly ears God and you'll begin to change um, our, 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 our spirits God from the inside out Lord and we'll, when we begin to look in the mirror all we will see is victory all we will see is peace all we will see is love faith hope God and grace God and we just thank you that you give us all those things God and we thank you that we have our renewed spirit in you in Jesus name amen beautiful prayer beautiful prayer 
We love you. Here's a little, I'm not, it's tough for me to even say this, but I'm in the spirit. It's what we're here to do. To me, the Holy Spirit, this isn't like a prediction, but it's a, it, I guess we would call it a prophecy. And it's one that's very common sense logical too. Warning. All, obviously, the poor people are out here. We, they know the warning right now. That's why the toilet paper and everything's coming off the stocks of rice and the beans. But warning to those of you that run the areas, the state, all of you that are in charge and in power and sitting on the money, that the people, when, when, when they begin to die, when things get stressful, when it becomes a military state, the people, when they rise up, they're going to rise up against you. And they're going to rise up against you and your families. And so the way to pr protect that and to protect your hard work and your legacies and your these kind of things so that when things snap off, what you need to do is begin to recruit people with intelligence, with faith, and with a message that are from the areas that are struggling. So that you have leaders from communities that aren't like yours. Because there's more of them than there are of you. We're ready to go. Y'all have a great day. God bless you.